This is the second video of the linear algebra series. We're going to calculate eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Maple can do it for both numerical uh, matrices, complex, floating point, as well as symbolic matrices. Let's get started. Okay, for this worksheet, what I'm going to do is change the interface of the imaginary unit to I because I prefer it as a physicist instead of capital I. Let's have a matrix here. Now, Maple has two ways of extracting the eigenvalues. First, we can create just the lambda and call from linear algebra the procedure eigenvalues. Put in the matrix A and it extracts out the eigenvalues. Most of the time, though, you want the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So this is how we do it. Lambda comma v colon equals linear algebra colon dash eigen vectors and again pass it the matrix a the output is a vector of the eigenvalues and a matrix for which each eigenvector is in the column associated with this first eigenvector a is I'm sorry, well, this eigenvalue A is this eigenvector 1, 0. Associated with B is this eigenvector right here. You may have already noticed that when Maple returns the results, the order of the eigenvalues is not the same. So it is a pain in the butt, and sometimes you have to sort them in order to make sure that every time you execute, you are always referring to the first one from the sorted list. But be it as it may, that is basically what the eigenvalues and eigenvectors are. From that, we can actually extract out the eigenvalues. And the best way to do that is, first of all, knowing how many dimensions there are. Uh, a quick way to do that is use linear algebra colon dash dimension. And we can put in lambda. And when we do, it tells us there are two. So from that, we can then build our eigenvalues, uh, vectors from. And the way I like to do it is with this way. We're going to actually do it two ways, but I like to do it this way. I like to create a list from a sequence where I take from the matrix every row, comma, of a particular column. And the column numbers are added up 1 to n. And then I put that again in a list. So when I do that, I get these two results. Another way to do that is also where you this way is to convert v into a list. And note that basically the dimension is 2, and that will extract everything from the column dimensions. And when you do, you get a result that looks like that. Now, if we want to know, does these pair of eigenvalues and eigenvectors actually satisfy the eigenvalue equation, we can put this in. And I, what I've decided to do is I'm going to make sure it gets properly simplified. So I put everything within one uh, element of a list in which it does, you can see that the left-hand side is equivalent to the right-hand side. How did I type that in? Well, I said simplify, open parentheses, and again, I want to put everything within one element of a list, A, and again, this is a matrix calculation, so it's period instead. E, I'll use the second one, is got to equal to lambda 2 times E, the second one, and again, when you do that, it shows that the left-hand side is equivalent to the right-hand side. That is, the eigenvalue equation is satisfied. You may have also noticed one other thing, in that not only are the results that you get returned uh, unsorted and can vary every time you run the eigenvector procedure for the same matrix, but also the eigenvectors themselves are not normalized. We'll look at that next. All right, in order to talk about normalization of eigenvectors, let's look at a numerical problem here. This one is a new matrix. It's the letter 
A, uh, let's extract out both the eigenvalues, comma, and the eigenvectors in a matrix, colon dash, linear algebra, colon dash, as opposed to colon equals, uh, eigenvectors of A. And again, you can see the output. Here is the column of eigenvalues. Here is three columns of eigenvectors. You may even notice there's all sorts of mix-up of the square roots within the eigenvectors. We'll talk about how to simplify that. In fact, let's just do that first. Let's reevaluate V, where we're going to go through and look at every single element and make sure it gets evaluated, since this is complex, both as a real and imaginary part. So the output is just real and imaginary. When you put that in with the tilde to say element-wise is calculation, you can see you can simplify the vectors into something that is much easier to read. The next thing we want to do is distract out the eigenvectors and put them as separate elements within the list. So again, to create a list, it's open square bracket. We want to create a sequence of these elements. We are going to draw from the V, the matrix, every row, comma, the nth column. And we're going to count from n equals 1 to big N. And much easier to read, and we can then work with the eigenvectors directly labeled. Now, if we want to add the line to check to see if the left-hand side of the eigenvalue equation is equivalent to the right-hand side, we can use the equals procedure again within linear algebra. The problem is, when you do this, you seem to get results that suggest that there is a problem. Problem is, again, Maple by default does not simplify. It does not evaluate as complex. And so what we have to do is we have to take this same statement, which is a sequence of equal um, calculations, we'll put this down here, and then we'll make sure that each element on each side is evaluated as a complex expression. So again, it simplifies it to the real and imaginary components. And when you do, the result is true, 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 that the left-hand side of every eigenvector is associated with the eigenvalue. So finally, we reach the point of, well, how do we make sure that each of these eigenvectors is normalized if we prefer it that way? We've already extracted out the eigenvectors, but I'm going to do this all in one step. As long as you have the number of eigenvalues uh, or eigenvectors, you can rebuild E again as a list, which is made up from a sequence. And the sequence is what we're going to do is we're going to call the linear algebra colon dash normalize procedure. We'll pass it again, the matrix that we extracted our eigenvectors, again, every row in the nth column. But this time what we're going to do is we're going to normalize it using Euclidean or two. Either way will work. Okay? Once you have that normalization, and then you just count from 1 to n. Close, hit enter, and you can see all these eigenvectors now are normalized, and therefore, if I do something like E, 1, period, E, 1, I get this. Uh-oh, looks like it's not. Go back, eval C of this expression, and it comes out to be 1. Let's say we want to do a problem which involves numbers and we get complex results. Not only that do we get complex results, but some of these really don't need the imaginary component. And some of these complex values are incredibly small, like look at this one. Is there a way to make it much simpler? 
And the answer is obviously yes. We can recalculate lambda by basically simplifying every element of lambda. Notice the i's disappear. V is not as easy. If we just simply try the simplify every element of V, we are still stuck with some very small numbers. So instead what we do is we normalize as a floating point, since these are floating points, F normal tilde every element of V and then simplify and now we get a result which is much easier to work with. The final task I'm going to show you is, let's say you constantly need to refer to the eigenvector with, for which the associate eigenvalue is the largest. In this particular problem, that's 2.191. And if you run this eigenvectors uh, expression multiple times, there's no guarantee that that will be the first one. So how do you make sure that when you run it, that it comes out sorted? Well, the answer is it won't come out sorted. So we have to come up with a way to sort it. So here's what we do is we have to first figure out the order of the sort. So I'll call this the lambda order. And this is to sort lambda itself, but make the output of this a, the permutation. And you notice, by default, it goes from smallest to largest. Then we can recalculate what lambda is by defining it as lambda by the lambda order. And that's what lambda is now. The problem is, of course, is that we have also sorted, uh, we have also mixed up the eigenvectors. So how do we fix that? Since we want to extract out our eigenvectors, but we don't want it in the order they came in, but rather in the lambda order, the easiest way to do this is to make sure that the nth column is not the nth column, but rather the lambda order of the nth component. When you do that, as you can see, here is our lambda, here's our v. We actually want to start with this one, followed by that one, followed by that one, when you hit enter, we get the results that we expect. And now the lambdas and the e's are properly associated. I encourage you to go to the website gould.prof learningmaple to get the document associated with this video.